have your way as we begin the month of supernatural acceleration. Let our run horses. Let our run and our space those who compete against us. Let's finish this year better than we began. We make a covenant with you today. Help us, Lord. Increase our velocity. In Jesus' name. Amen. Take your seat. The beauty of holiness. Uh, can I get a better sound? A louder bit, a bit, please. Um, you know that GPS, the Global Pastors Summit, begins this Wednesday. I'm bringing all these men of God to this house. I know there are some of you who feel that you are not pastors. So you are not coming. But let me tell you something. Anointing is anointing. And let me explain this to you. You see, it's like having a car. And then you can afford super. The super is full. Those of you with bicycle, you might not understand it. I mean... I mean, super is a type of fuel. It's a lower grade fuel. And then there is super mass, eh? Uh, uh, v power. Okay, so, so this conference is a V power conference. You see, you have been working with super anointing, super level anointing. But this through this conference is V power anointing. Now it is like it is like somebody meeting you at the fourth station and telling you that oh why are you buying super into your car? Let me buy V power into your car. And he say oh because I've been using super all this while, I'm okay with super when God is promoting you. So don't say oh because I'm not a pastor. I will not go. Anointing is anointing. These men of God are anointed. And I've already asked that some of you should take leave of your, of your work and be here for these three days. 7 a.m. we are here. If you don't come early, you may not have a seat. So make sure you are here. And because of um, GPS, all services are suspended, isn't it? Good. Now, the week after, I'm going to declare something called the Velocity Week. The Velocity Week, where we are going to increase our speed and we're going to run like something. And I'll be holding the Velocity Anointing service here the week after. So keep this at the back of your mind. But this morning, allow me to quickly continue with my series on becoming the best you can be. So we are doing part three. And the word best is an acronym, a four-letter acronym. Be yourself, examine yourself, stretch yourself, and trust yourself. So we've spoken about being yourself. Last week, I spoke to you about examining yourself. And today, we are looking at stretching yourself. Stretch yourself. And uh, we're going to build this around Joseph. So, lessons from the limitless life of Joseph. I believe that God is going to give you some revelations, some keys, some principles, some information that will help you at pace and at run horses this month. How many of you are ready for that? Amen. So those of you who saw what I posted uh, for this um, advert, I told you I started secondary. I started a primary school at eight. So I used to be called class one papa, because the other mates were all um, six, and I was eight. And then after primary school, I went to middle school. So I, I. I before I entered secondary school, I have done basic education for 10 years. So I went to secondary school around 17, 18. 
Then my classmates were people that had finished private schools. At that time, we had something we call common entrance. So they would write it at class six, so at 12. So they came to secondary school form one at 12. And I was in secondary school form one at 18. So the class one papa then caught me at class form one papa. And then I went to university after 30 years. So all my life, I was playing catch up. Until I discovered the secret of stretching yourself. Today, I have outpaced, outrun many people that were miles ahead of me. Miles ahead of me. It is the same anointing, the same power, the same principle that took me from the back and brought me in front. That is behind this message. Oh, you didn't hear me well. That is behind this message. The same principle that took me from the bottomless pit to the mountain top is behind this message. I always would love to remind you that 22 years ago, I was a squatter here. But I also need to remind you that it doesn't just take the grace of God and the favor of God to get to where I have gotten to. I had a very responsible response to the grace of God and to the favor of God. To get to where I have gotten to. So you cannot lie in bed and allow the grace of God to work for you. You cannot be playing video games all your life and allow the favor of God to go to market and shop for you. So today, in addition to the favor and the grace of God, which is available to every believer, whether you pray for it, whether you ask for it, whether you fast for it or not, it's available. The grace of God is as available as oxygen is available for you right now as you breathe in and breathe out. But if you hold your nose now, you are going to die. Not because there is an absence of oxygen in the air, but because you held your nose. Anybody who feels like you are failing, you feel like you are, you are way back where you were supposed to be, you are not there, and you are trying to blame people, you are trying to even hold God responsible, you are trying to say your pastor is not anointed, you are trying to say, you see a prophet, I came to announce, I came to share some principles with you. Take these principles, work with them, apply them, your life will change. By the special grace of God. Now life is about efforts and results. Effort is the vigorous and determined attempt to achieve a certain result in life. You need to be determined. You need to be very vigorous in life to get the results that you are looking for. Any other way, you won't get results. The determination and the vigorousness with which you pursue your dreams and visions in life will give you a certain result in life. Are you here? Now, I'll be reading from the New Living Translation and I have done a few paraphrasing of this scripture. Genesis 41. I just want us to focus on what is important for us. 45 and 46 and then we read 55. Even with the 45, I've taken a portion out. But I want us to focus. 
So Joseph took charge of the entire land of Egypt. He was 30 years old when he began serving in the court of Pharaoh. Please note, he was 30 years old when he began to serve in the court of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. And when Joseph left Pharaoh's presence, he inspected the entire land of Egypt. Eventually, verse 55, however, the famine spread throughout the land of Egypt as well. And when people cried out to Pharaoh for food, he told them, go to Joseph and do whatever he tells you. The amazing evolutionary story of Joseph. Now, let me, let, me, let me show you something. Let me try to bring it to our, our context, our today's understanding. You see, the United Kingdom is made up of different nations. One of them is England. We, we have the Queen of England, who is the Queen of the United Kingdom. But let me use England. So we have the, king, the Queen of England, and then we have the Prime Minister of England. Now, the Queen of England is the head of state of, of England, but the Prime Minister is the head of government. So there is a monarchy, or a monarch, and then there is a political system that runs. Now, the, the duty of the Prime Minister of England is to make policies, is to run the country the queen is more ceremonial the prime minister will make decisions the parliament will make laws and present to the queen for the purpose of respect but the queen does not have the power to change it it is the same arrangement that existed between joseph and pharaoh so pharaoh Play the role like the Queen of England plays today. And then Joseph played the role of Boris Johnson. So Joseph was the head of government. He was the prime minister, the head of government. He made political decisions and policies to run Egypt. Pharaoh became a ceremonial head. Joseph had gotten this position because there was going to be seven years of famine and seven years of abundance. And they needed someone who could design a 14-year economic plan to make Egypt a superpower. And guess who they appointed? A 30-year-old foreigner. A 30-year-old foreigner. So Joseph was prime minister at 30. What a stretch. Prime minister at 30. Today, as I speak to you now, there is a 30 year old man who still thinks he's a boy lying in bed right now playing video game. Will not even go to church. And at the age of 30, Joseph was managing a whole nation. A whole nation. When he was given the appointment, immediately he left Pharaoh. He went to inspect the entire land of Egypt. A 30-year-old foreigner. He wasn't a tongue stalker. Throughout the scriptures, I never even read about Joseph praying. But he feared the Lord. A 30 year old man with the responsibility to manage seven years of abundance and seven years of severe famine. A 30 year old man. Today you watch TV 
and you even find gray bearded men saying in this country we the youth they don't care about us we the youth they don't care about us you are 40 for god's sake why do you still have the youth mindset and feel and think that somebody should care about you and run your life for you they are 40 year old men and women give them a department give them a department in your company and they will run it down and a 30 year old boy was here running an entire country they are 50 year old men who cannot even manage a family they cannot manage their wives and manage their children and raise godly children they are bitter about things that have happened in their past and how their past is affecting their performance today i hear men who tell their wives you are the cause of my downfall as if you are already up eh? when you met where were you standing as if you were already somewhere a successful man managing something big and then you marry the woman and the woman messed your life up there are 30 year old men sitting down here right now who get angry if their parents their mother <laughs> if their if their mothers don't cook if they don't give them banku and eba they, they, they get angry and they will threaten that you will do so I will leave this house and I won't come again you have actually overstayed it is in this country that when, when we even appoint 35 year old people to be ministers we say and the government has left the experienced man and he's appointing small boys how are you a small boy after 25 how how are you a small boy after 25 when when 18 year old guys are becoming millionaires in other countries and in your country ojak room <laughs> you are a small boy at 35 You are a small girl at 25. And you have the youth mindset. The small boy mindset. You know why I married at 24? Because by 16, I didn't see myself as youth. In fact, sometimes I sit down now and I cast my mind back and remember the things i used to do where i used to preach at 16 and the fellowships i used to run at 16 and then i just look at myself and i say to myself then i i really grew up early but it's a mindset i did not allow my community my society to define my maturity i defined it myself If you are not ahead of yourself, you can never be ahead of anybody. If your behavior, your decisions, your choices are not older than your age, forget about success. especially if we live in a country or on a continent like this i had mugabe uh, tony blair and george bush died and they went to hell and they asked satan permission to make calls so george bush george bush made a call and spent three minutes and satan said hundred dollars 
And then Tony Blair made a call, spent three minutes. Satan said, $50. Then Robert Mugabe made a call and spent three hours. And Satan said, one dollar. Then he said, oh, so you are bringing this discrimination and racism to hell. These white people made three minutes calls and you charge them $150 and I have made three hours. I should be paying more. Why am I paying less? You are being, you think Africans, we are poor. Satan said, oh, no, 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 don't be angry. The call was a local call. It was from hell to hell. You live on this continent and you are waiting for, for who? Who should make a policy for your future? Haven't you, haven't you heard of people that are already rich in billions of dollars still stealing billions of dollars and burying them in cemeteries? And you ask yourself, what are they going to do with it? They are in their 80s and they are still stealing in billions of dollars. And they are in their 80s. Corruption carry forward. And you are around. I am a small boy. Me. Are you? Okay. Now let me show you how Joseph got here. Why would Pharaoh say to his citizens, when they go to him, he said, go. Whatever Joseph tells you, do it. The evolution of Joseph. The evolution of Joseph. At 17, he had an audacious dream. He stretched so much his imagination. He saw his future and what he would become. You see, because of your fetish mindset... And Satan is chasing me and somebody is going to do me juju. When you dream, when you dream you, the things you see is, is Satan chasing you and somebody having a knife and wanting to kill you. And oh look, you, Joseph didn't bother himself about where Satan was. His dream was into his future. But at the age of 17, he had programmed his mind as if it was the end of his life. And what he saw really influenced his behavior. He was sold by his brothers. Your brother just betrayed you and is the reason for which you are a failure. In fact, you have gone somewhere where some false prophet has told you that your genius sister has taken your glory. That's why you are suffering. Or your junior brother has taken your glory. That's why you are suffering. And the same brother you came from the same womb, womb with, you are not on talking terms, you are fighting. Your children cannot relate to themselves. They can't have cousins they can relate with. You are dividing them. You are, you are causing problems in your family. A slave in Potiphar's wife house. Wrongly imprisoned. And yet, having gone through all these, having gone through all these, he was still a prime minister at 30. How did that happen? How did that happen? Having been through all these things, he still became a prime minister at 30. How did that happen? You see, if one of these had happened to you, you would have gone to your grave at 80, blaming people for your failures. I need some people to wake up here. From your sleep and your slumber. From that blame game. And start taking charge of your life. And do something with your life. We all have past. 
But we also have a future. A future is the only unused time you have. The future is the only opportunity you have. In this month of supernatural acceleration, may this message bring you, stir up something in your spirit. And, and, and rise up from your sleep and slumber and begin to run, not walk. Begin to soar, not run. <laughs> so, how did he end up becoming a prime minister at 30? Having gone through all these things. Let me show you something. At the heart of Joseph's success is discretionary effort something we call discretionary effort now discretionary effort is the level of effort people could give if they wanted to but above and beyond the minimum required so i was employed in a church as an administrative pastor i realized the church didn't have a youth pastor, I took that responsibility. That was a discretionary effort. I was good at writing scripts and directing stage play. I took that one upon myself as well. That was a discretionary effort. I wasn't getting paid for it. That was a discretionary effort. There were no men's fellowship pastor. I took that in addition to my responsibility. It was a discretionary effort. Mommy created a women's fellowship choir. It was in my church. It was somebody else's church. Yet my wife, who was then a full-time worker, and we had Kevin as a baby, would still go to work, come back home, have time to run the women's fellowship choir. She wasn't getting paid for it. Discretionary effort. We are not where we are today because we only fasted and prayed. But we put in vigorous and determined attempt to get to somewhere. And the key to the success of most people is going beyond what is expected of you? You were employed to weed one plot of land. And then after weeding that plot of land, you still have a reserve energy to clear the other plot at least half. But because it's not part of your job description, and because you will not be paid for that extra effort you won't do it and so you place a limitation on yourself why you see there's a difference between what you have to do and what you want to do so the second definition of discretionary effort. Discretionary effort is the extra effort employees, for example, give because they want to. There are so many things mommy does. Yesterday I was having a, a, a chat with Kevin. I was telling Kevin the role mommy has played in our family. So she Actually, this woman holds this family together. This, this, this woman... A, her commitment to the family and sometimes the things she does is not because she has to but because she wants to come home in the evening and see all of us in her bedroom from crinkling to crinkling and everybody is taking a drug and she knows everybody's drug this is your drug Take this, take this. No, take it for me to see before you go to bed. You used to take your own. Take your own. Then she turns to me and say, I want to see you taking your drugs before you go to bed. And I'm like, I'm not one of your children. I say, you're my firstborn. Take it. It is that discretionary effort she puts in her marriage 
that has created a certain husband for her. And I also believe, but I can't praise myself, but I also believe that the, I have done things in this marriage not because I have to, but because I wanted to. Are, are you here? Do you understand? So you need to understand that there are things that you have to do and there are things that you want to do. And those who do the things they have to do do not become successful. At least there's a difference between surviving, survival and success. Most people are surviving. Some marriages, some occupational life, some businesses are only surviving. They are not successful. And there is only a thin line between sur surviving and being successful. So you are likely to define surviving as successful until you are hit by a storm. Most people who thought their businesses were successful did not they realize that they were only surviving when COVID hit. They realized they were only surviving. Discretionary effort, it is the intensity of people's voluntary effort that are providing that they are providing to a task and activity, but above and beyond the minimal requirements. You know why service is here today? Because of people's discretionary effort. As I last, the whole of yesterday, virtually I spent like 12 hours on church issues. I was here till late because they were doing all these things. Others actually stayed up to 2 a.m. to ensure we can have a certain background. Some stayed up to 2 a.m. Today by 6 a.m., some people were already here facing things. These are not part of the package of being a member of a church. It is not. It is not. It's a discretionary effort. They are not things you do that will make you a Christian or take you to heaven. But it is discretionary effort. And when you see an organization is succeeding it is because of those who are giving a little bit more a little bit more than they are required to <laughs> well Discretionary effort is the interaction in the workplace where individuals give more than expected. So, have said about all these things. Now, Jesus himself was an advocate of discretionary effort. Look at Jesus in Matthew 5, verse 41, from the New King James Version. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. And you know, under which circumstance Jesus was giving this advice? The Roman soldiers at the time could just catch a Jew on the, on the street and ask you to carry his cassava and plantain and other things and let's go. Forced labor. Jesus said, if they ask you to carry anything for one mile, go two miles. Because Jesus knew that everybody who wants a milestone in life must go the extra mile in whatever you do. Go the extra mile in whatever you do. So, so let me now show you examples of discretionary efforts in Joseph's life. Why the man went through the most traumatic experience any young person would go, could go through and yet became a prime minister at 30.
And why at 30, you are so bitter against someone? You are so blaming somebody for, for, for your life. And you want somebody to take responsibility for your failures. Somebody to take responsibility for the fact that you, you didn't do something and, 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 and that and that and that. Joseph came from a broken home. The, the house was very hostile. Her mother and her auntie were fighting over the same man. When they even couldn't give birth again, they gave their, their, the man Jacob their 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 house helps to give birth on their behalf they had mind each other there was a serious rivalry in that house and you only one wicked uncle who took your father's land is the reason why you are failed nonsense boy That's why God is not blessing you. Because you are looking for money to go back home and face that your uncle. That is the only, the only motivation you have in life is how to get money and go back home and prove people, prove something to some people. Life is more serious than that. Life is more serious than that. So examples of discretionary effort in Joseph's life. Listen carefully. Genesis 39 verse 6. This was Joseph in Potiphar's house as a slave. So Potiphar gave Joseph complete administrative responsibility over everything he owned. Hear this bit. With Joseph there, he, did, he didn't worry about a thing except what kind of food to eat. I said, what kind of food? Now, Potiphar was a highly successful man. So he had donkeys, he had horses, he had businesses, he had a number of servants and maid servants. He left all these things in the hands of Joseph. And the only thing he worried himself about was the food he was going to eat. And the only worry he had was hard to lift the food from the plate and put it in his mouth. Finished. Every other space was covered by Joseph. You see, life, eh? I learned something very early about occupying space. We had a player in Ghana, Tony Yeboah. His compatriot was Abedi Pele. Abedi Pele was skillful. It was just like Messi and Ronaldo. One very skillful, one very determined. Tony Yabua was very determined. And very, I bet the Pele was, um, could dribble this whole church. Because when I saw the football yesterday, you know, I bet the Pele can dribble all the men here. Except Apostle Eric because of size. <laughs> but listen Tony Yeboah's success when I was listening to a, 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 um, an interview I was watching a documentary on him and his coach was saying that Tony Yeboah was so smart that he always moved into space so he got very good wingers, fast wingers and told them when you get the ball just look at where Tony Yeboah is he will be in a space when you send that ball to him will score from then i kept at the back of my mind that any organization i work in i will always look for the spaces that are unoccupied because no single organization can give enough job descriptions to cover every job in the organization there will be spaces left and in life, there are so many spaces. In the life of your husband, in the life of your wife, in the life of your church, in the life of your friends, there are spaces that you can occupy. Give a little bit of yourself. Go beyond what is expected of you. Do more. Joseph did that in the in Potiphar's house. 
in Potiphar's house. He didn't complain that I was being made to do a certain work in addition to my work and I'm not getting paid for it. You see, let me tell you something. If you want to grow in life, if you want to succeed in life, don't look at the extra hours that you work as something you must get money for. But you must look at it as something you are using to build your capacity for the future. The people you see going on strife for extra duty allowance and all those things, please, they are job they have job mindset. You have a business mindset. You must have an entrepreneurial mindset. Don't ever think that you are going to live on your salary and die and re or retire onto your pension. That will not be a good way to retire. It will not. That is why people working in government are asking for contracts when they retire. They still ask for contract because the pension pay will not take them anywhere. It is when you get older that you become more expensive. Medicals, whatever. Your, the food you eat itself becomes more expensive. Now that you are young, you can pass through a theater in the corner and eat concote. And you don't care the volume of carbohydrates in the concote because after that, you are walking like 12 kilometers home. <laughs> you understand so at a certain age you but when you get older then you realize the number of times you have to go to hospital the number of times you have to buy drugs the number of things you need to do to survive now it becomes more expensive and you realize that your salary is not enough to take good care of you but because you have a job mentality a job mentality you programmed yourself for retirement and live on SNIT contribution with what politicians are doing with SNIT one day we'll wake up and SNIT will no longer be around somebody say hey there will be gnashing and wailing of teeth in many homes. Now Genesis 39 verse 23. The warden. This was Joseph in prison. Joseph in prison. Look at him. The warden had no worries. Because Joseph took care of everything. The Lord was with him. And caused everything he did. To succeed. The warden had no worry because Joseph took care of not some things but everything. The man's ability to go beyond what he has to do to what he wants to do is amazing. You are not doing this church a favor if you decide to be here every morning to sweep here and so women are doing it very well the discretionary effort you are putting in in your christian life will come back to bless you when it comes to god when it comes to god and you put in discretionary effort you move your prayer life from that 30 minutes of God bless me to one hour of God anoint my pastor. God let souls be won for the kingdom. And you work a little for the Lord. That discretionary effort will bring you blessings. Are you here? Don't let your pastor stand on this altar and convince you to work for the Lord. It must be something that comes natural with you. Something that you feel from the inside of you. You want to give God more than you are giving him. 
You want to give God more than you are giving him. It should come natural. You want to give your wife more than you are giving him. You want to give your husband more than you are giving him. You want to put in more in your work, more than you are putting in your work. You want to put more in that relationship, more than you are putting. You want to put in more in raising your children, more than you are doing now. It is the extra things you do that makes you extraordinary. Because beyond the extra thing, everything you do is ordinary. Everything you do is ordinary. <laughs> Am I talking to someone here? I will not be able to talk on the five types of efforts because that will keep us here beyond time. Let me just conclude with my concluding statements. Let me just conclude with my concluding statements. One, your life today is not a reflection of your circumstances, but a reflection of your circumspection. Ask Joseph, and he will tell you. Joseph's life. If, if you did, hadn't met Joseph or had not read about him and you had seen him at 30, you would never have known that he was sold by his brothers. He was falsely accused to have been raped, to, to have attempted to rape a woman and he was imprisoned. You would never have known because he did not allow his circumstances to determine his life. But he was very circumspect in life made the right choices the right decisions put in the right efforts at the right places had the right attitude the right posture the right thinking the right frame the right relationships the right choice of words everything right brought him this far can i see the next slide please in life freebies will make you feeble if you want everything free Free, 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 free. Church, even when you are asked to pay tithes, you are annoyed because you want church free. Preaching free. I saw on Facebook when government announced that they were going to stop printing one CD note and two CDs note, somebody said, Oh, my offering is gone. I have to raise my offering. <laughs> <laughs> but you know this sermon is not a one CD offering sermon in fact if, if I had taken this into a conference facility to teach there for the few minutes I'm spending in this pulpit people would have paid thousands to join in this one huh? take away yeah. this is a major take away sermon you finish eating you get extra to take away to even feed your children with it. Wow. Don't settle for free things in life. Don't settle for free things in life. Pay for everything. Pay the price for your prize. Work hard. Pay that price for your prize. Work hard. Make sure whatever comes to you, you have made a contribution to it. Okay, the next one. In life, you cannot carry anything that is worthier than you. That is worthier than you. So build your capacity. Build your strength. Your mental strength, your mental capacity. Some, some of you want things that will eventually kill you. <laughs> anything weightier than you you can carry so build your capacity whatever you are looking for in life build capacity for it then finally we'll take our second offering i'll do dedication and then we will be off from here and then we cut some cake for nigeria and um, those who celebrated their birthday in september yeah in life 
you cannot at pace anything faster than you so you want to be ahead improve your speed in life do in one day what it takes others one week to do what i can stand in my life it's a job that can be done overnight and some people would like to spend their lifetime doing it procrastination i'll do it tomorrow waste more uh, my 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 pen was not coming so i couldn't write the letter i will write it tomorrow one time one of my staff came to me and said daddy if all of us work in this office has the same attitude as this person mention another staff this person like this company will grow very fast i said what happened then we we had another office in community 18 and the printers and things were there so we had just moved in to this facility so he was supposed to go to the community 18 facility to print something for me when he got to community 18 there was light off and the plant had broken down so the others they oh call daddy to tell him that light off plant down just call him he said no the man needs it so i'm going to where i can find light so he went to Nungwa to print it and brought it to me without even telling me the circumstances under which he got it done that even telling me and i marked that person down for huge success he will be 10 times better than me because he continues to do that when i was i i was doing an collaboration with the australian institute of business you know at the time the australians as we are here the australians are sleeping okay so by the time we'll be going to bed we'll be waking up so if they sent a letter to me they sent the letter at the time i was sleeping email and then when i woke up to reply they would be sleeping so a common email would take us three days i said i won't let that happen so i will stay awake whilst they are sleeping and i'll be responding to their mails we got the collaboration in six months instead of two years and they said for the first time in their history they have done a collaboration with an african institution that they ended in six months instead of two years what are you wasting time for you must get up and start running <laughs> nobody has time to pick you up everybody is going you had a story the parable of the good samaritan the parable of the good samaritan please people are too busy to be focusing on you in fact, people said, oh, the Levites and the priests were very wicked people. They went past the man. No, 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 no. None of them had a donkey to carry him. They were all walking like him. The good Samaritan came with a donkey. He had what he had. He had capacity to help. Only few people can help you. But those people, to wait for them, to meet them, you would have gotten gray hair and ready to go to your grief help yourself because god is your helper god bless you